Behind every bit of mom wisdom is a story. A story of a real mom and real kids just trying to love each other well. Whether you're cozied up on the couch with a mug of coffee or out for a walk, you're welcome to join us as we share stories and laugh, learn, and grow together. It's the I'm Mom Podcast. Welcome to this week's episode of the I'm Mom Podcast. Abby, Susan, Chloe, and Megan with you once again this week to talk about how to know when to get involved with kid drama or things going on in your kids' lives when your kids are not the ones who are directly involved. And I'll tell this story happened a few months ago. I got a text from a school mom who I didn't actually have her number in my phone. It came up as just a number. I didn't have her name. And she identified herself and said, hey, there's a situation going on with my child at school and he said that your son saw it happen. Can I get your son's version of the story? And she was very like reasonable with me. She's like, I know he might have experienced it maybe different from how it actually happened. And so I'm really curious to know what your son thought. When she said he, she met her son. Yes. So she was trying to get intel on, does my yes. son have the story yes. correct? Could he be giving details that aren't, you know, aren't necessarily true? And it was like a bullying situation actually involving a girl. And so I asked my son and he told me the story and I told the mom the story. And I said, you know, it sounds like what your son is saying happened actually happened. And she thanked me. And then she's like, I have tried to communicate this and I don't feel like it's been heard. Would you mind emailing administration? And that's where I was like, oh man, like, what, what do I do? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I, it's one thing, you know, to keep it within my own walls, but now to step outside of that, I'm like, you know, what do I do? And I actually did end up emailing the teacher because we have, you know, a hierarchy of, of complaints, you know, you go up the ladder basically. And I said, here is exactly what is going on. She reached out to me. I, I don't know this family very well. I don't know the other family very well. Black and white, here's what's happening. I am now stepping out. Do with it whatever you want. I told a friend this story and she's like, oh, well, you probably shouldn't have gotten involved. Like the, her reaction made me feel like I should have said I'm an outsider and I can't get involved. Like, what would you guys have done in that situation? Would you have stepped in? Well, first, let me say, I feel your pain because the last thing we want is for our kids to get caught in the middle of something. You're putting your child out there as an informant kind mm -hmm. of. So the kids could get mad at the child. Mm -hmm. The teacher could be like, why are you interfering? You know, right. or take it personally. Like, do you not think I'm watching my kids? So first I would have felt like you. Um, it's hard. Yeah. It's a hard choice. What would you have done, Megan? I, that's to your point, that's a really hard situation. I err usually more, I don't like drama really stresses me out. Not that it doesn't stress y'all out, but it does stress me out. And so I always err on the side of how can I not be involved in it? Um, so honestly, I don't know what I would do in your situation because it sounds like it's a situation that isn't being heard and needs to be taken care of because it's affecting the child. Um, but whenever I, my kids aren't school age yet, so I haven't dealt with that in particular, but I have been in situations where there's drama between moms. Um, and I've been tried to be brought into it and I've just kind of said, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to stay out of it. If someone needs to come talk to me about something in particular, I'm happy for them to come reach out to me and, and I'll discuss it with them one-on-one, -on -one, but I don't want to be brought into a group drama situation, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. And in this case, you didn't know. You thought you were just having a private chat, like helping this mom figure out what's going on in school. You did not know ahead of time that she was going to say, oh, well, can you tell the administration, like, mm -hmm. help me defend my child? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I couldn't help, though, but feel for this mom yeah. who had, she has seen the situation escalate yeah. over the years and didn't feel like she was getting anywhere. I'm like, what would what would I want? to be done if I was in her position, you know, she, her kids yeah, getting sounds bullied really or whatever. desperate, which is, uh, yeah, yeah. it sounds um, like desperate for anyone to help her. Right. To text a person who you, you don't know, like, Hey, this is so-and-so. Yeah. I know you don't know me, but can you, can you help me with this situation? She must've been desperate. And she asked her, she must've asked her child, did anyone else yeah. observe this? Like and, she's desperate. Yeah. And she didn't just go straight to you and say, Hey, I know Graham saw this. Can you report it? She wanted to make sure his story matched her son's story. Yeah. Yeah. So personalizing this, I would have done what she did. You know, you, if you see your child suffering and it's going on a long time, you've got to get 
somehow she had to prove it. So I don't blame her. I yeah. think she kind of did the right thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how do you determine when it's appropriate to get involved in another kid's drama, whether it's a case of bullying or um, what's the word I'm looking for? Alleged bullying or a child who is, you find out that there's kids drinking and it's not your kid, but you know the kid who's doing it. Like, how do you determine when to jump in and when to MYOB? Well, I think definitely if there's children or lives at risk mm -hmm. or somebody could be hurt, that's a definite. Yeah. You, you need to do the right thing. Yeah. I think there's like three questions you have to ask. One of them is, is there a child at risk? Because in that case, Susan, I think you mentioned before about Megan knowing that there were kids that were driving or drinking or something like that. Yeah. Like, how do you, as a mom, if, if I was a mom whose child got hurt and another mom ha could have done something oh, to yeah. jump in, mm -hmm. like I wouldn't be able to live with that. Yeah. yeah. And that was a hard conversation because of course your teenagers, and let's talk about the teenagers, are not going to want their mom to be the rat. Yeah. But at some time you have to look at the teenagers too and say, why aren't you the rat? Do you not care for your friend's life yeah. or the lives of those in their car too? So it's it's hard to make those difficult calls. But, mm -hmm. you but when you're to. that age, like you can't see past Friday yeah. night, you know? It's, and peer um, pressure, they're going to yeah. hate me. Yeah, yeah, true. Do you think there are gender differences in how parents approach involvement in these things? Like, do you would you jump in quicker if it is for a girl? That would be my not guess. Not for me, not for me. Mm -mm. No. What about if it's friend issues, like not talking about like drinking or drugs or anything like that, but like if it's a, a friend issue, do you think that moms are more likely to jump in for girls than boys? Because we are girls and we have experienced that where for boys, it's more like, oh, you guys will work punch each other out. in the arm and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, and because girls well, are more relational. This is probably going to jump mm -hmm. into your next point if I know you, but how much responsibility do we put on the child? Because to me with friends issues... I sometimes would say, you know, why are you friends with this person? Mm -hmm. And they have to start to realize this is not changing. I'm getting left out all the time or this is not changing. This person always puts me down. So why are you friends? Mm. Let's, let's have a talk about what makes good friend. Yeah. Well, and it also prompts you to talk to your child about advocating for themselves or advocating for their friends. So yeah. if it is a situation, like maybe in the situation with my son, I could have said to him or to the other mom, I'm not going to email administration, but I will talk to my son yeah. about talking yeah. to the teacher and vouching for what is happening. Like how, is there an age that we can expect our kids to be able to do that? Or do we have to coach them? There's so many different variables mm -hmm. here. That's the hard thing. I think with I'm thinking back on girls, not Megan, but one of my other girls, um, you know, uh, girls can be manipulative mm. and girls can be codependent. Can I just say that yeah, right out there? Right. And so sometimes if you try to talk to the other mom about it or stuff, it's a, she said, she said thing yeah. and you're not going to get anywhere. So if it happens repetitively, you, you have to have that conversation. Like I said, like, why are you friends? Maybe you need to take a break. This is not a good relationship. Um, it's bringing you more strife than joy. Yeah. And you're at an age where you shouldn't have this complication. Let me know if this is going in a different direction, but what do you do in that situation where you've coached your child to make mm -hmm. a decision on the friendship and then the mom comes and talks to you? Why isn't so-and-so mm -hmm. hanging out with my kid? Um, I've had that. <laughs> Not quite yeah. like that, but um, at that point, I think you can say to that mom, you know, I'm not sure, but you know how girls are. Sometimes friendships, you know, take a detour for a yeah. while. So, uh, you know, let's just keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to answer yeah. to protect your child. Yeah, that's a good point. Because yeah. you can't say to that, mom, well, your, your <laughs> daughter was causing my daughter a lot of strife. Yeah. And I told her to take a break. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes relationships just need a pause. They do. Yeah. They do. Or they mature in yeah. a year and they're fine. So yeah. true. So then another question to ask yourself if you're like, deciding whether to step in or not is, are you biased? Could there possibly be some bias? So the example of a friend whose daughter played volleyball and had been like picked on by another member of the team, not like necessarily bullying, but just like made it an unfun environment for her to, to play on. And they solved it. But then her daughter came to her and was like, oh, well, so-and-so is at it again with another mm. kid on the team. So this mom has been holding on to 
what her own daughter went through and now has to decide, do I step in to help this new victim basically? Yeah. Mm. So like, I, I don't know if she could be unbiased because she is going in with information about what has happened in this situation with her kid. And that's super specific. But I think that in all these scenarios where we might be asked to step in or might have an opportunity to step in, we do have to ask ourselves if we are being black and white, if we are being fair, or if there's a possibility that we could, you know, lean one way or the other. I'm trying to think about how to do it. In that case, I might go to the coach and just say, hey, mm. I don't know if this is a thing or it was just a thing between my daughter and this girl, but you know, my daughter worked it out. It's not a problem for us, but I've heard rumors that it's kind of happening now with another girl. So you're with them. Yeah. Can you just get a pulse on it? I would hate for this to happen to somebody mm -hmm. else. Yeah. And then it's out of your hands. Yeah. Is there like a better person to go to in a situation? Like, do you hold back from going to the other parent and instead go to the coach, you know, like, how do you, it, like in my situation, she asked me go to administration. And I was mm -hmm. like, that is levels up from where I need to be. And we don't need to escalate it that quickly. But I would not have gone to the other mom because I don't know her from anybody. No. And, and, and it's not your child. Right. I mean, your child was just a bystander. Right. Yeah. I think it's, I think you were right to go to the teacher because I think the teacher is the only one who can keep an eye on it in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Um, and really get a handle on, is it happening again? Or right. I don't know. Yeah, I think a lot of times in this third question to ask before you jump in is, will your involvement help or just stir the pot? Sometimes the teacher might already know. Mm -hmm. And like, are you piling on? Are you just adding to the he said, she said? Are you giving information that she doesn't necessarily need? Um, I think that you have to say, mm, you know what, maybe my, I don't need to be, be part of this. I would ask yourself, are you always doing this? You know, if it's always you going, mm. then are you too like, you know, cause I will say there have been not many, but a case where it was one mom always, you know, finding the problem was her child just reporting too much or whatever. Cause some of these things, the kids should be able to work out. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, that's that. My next question is actually, what is the line between being supportive and stepping in where you see a problem and being overprotective when it comes to like kids, social dynamics. And like, how do you, how do you know when to stay back then and not be overbearing and overprotective? Yeah. How deep is this running? It sounds like in your, in the case that you got called, she'd already leveled it up yeah. to the administration. So this must've been a longstanding thing and she's desperate. She's now looking for witnesses. Mm -hmm. um, but and, and it depends on the age of the, the child and how deep the damage is. But gosh, I think a lot of times kids work stuff out. What do you think, Megan? I mean, you, you had such good friends. This didn't happen much. Um, I mean, my kids are just aren't old enough to, um, that they've, that they've hit this. I do feel like my generation as parents is much more willing and ready to step in versus letting some of the kids just work it out on their own and figure it out. Um, or that's just my observation. I think that might not be the case everywhere. Might not even be the case for my generation, but, um, that's just kind of what I feel like I've seen is that parents are much more quick to get involved in it. Um, and I really feel like it's just good life skills to kind of mm. let the kids figure it out themselves and work through it themselves and reach a resolution. Um, because I think too, if sometimes I've seen like if parents do get involved, it can cause more harm than good. Yeah. Well, and sometimes it is a lack of trust in authority. You know, the part two of this story is that while all this was going on, as I'm crafting, right after I sent the email to the teacher, the guidance counselor emailed me mm. and said, hey, I'm going to, I just want to let you know, I want to talk to your son about something that's going on in the classroom. Doesn't involve him. I will not, I've, I've made it a secret that I'm pulling him out. It's like a code that why he's getting pulled out of the classroom. So no one knows, but I need to hear from him. And I was like, did you know that I just um, emailed the teacher? And she's like, no, I had no idea. So it's like, but the parent probably had said, well, I know my child said that your son saw it. Um, yes. I'm well, and I think that the, the teacher could 
say, okay, this child was, you know, Graham was near what was going on. So yes, but like they were already on top of it. They were working on it. And so sometimes you have to trust that the people in charge are actually doing the work that needs to be done. And that was definitely the case with the guidance counselor. Do you feel like from, without revealing what Graham told you or what was going on, do you feel like it was a serious situation? I do because I think that it had escalated to physical. And in oh, that case, okay, I think yeah. like, you know, if there's pushing and shoving, then then yeah. If if they're doing something that could get the child or both kids expelled, then yeah. yes. Yes. I mean, this is a life changing event now. Right. So right. So my last question then, and this is kind of a big picture question, is what responsibility do we actually have to one another? You know, years ago the phrase, I think Hillary Clinton coined it, right? Did she to take the village? to raise a child, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's kind of been lost because we have become so um, sensitive to saying the wrong thing and and getting canceled or, you know, like we don't want to step in and help each other. So like, but we do have to help one another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I wrote about this a long time ago and I'm on the mom mafia. I like transparency. If my kids are doing something wrong, I want people to come tell me. Yeah. So I used to just say, I pray all the time, my kids will be caught in their sin. Well, if people or other kids are seeing things, then I need their parents to come tell me. So I made it a point of always receiving other people's observations um, or purposely trying to develop relationships yeah. with the parents of my kid's age so that we do keep an eye on mm-hmm. things in the classroom. Not like we're trying to purposefully find something, but so that I always have a 3D picture and not just my child. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause you never know when your child's going to be the problem. <laughs> yeah. Megan, you said a moment ago about you think that people your age and what you're seeing among your kids, friends, parents, that you think they are more inclined to jump in. Do you think it's, that's like a a change we're seeing that we're willing now to actually um, butt in when we need to? I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know. Um, And I don't know if it's because we're more sensitive or because we have more modes of communication or because we're more aware. I feel like there's so many different factors that could contribute to it. Um, I do have some friends though, that I just, we laugh because, because we all have basements up here in the North. Um, and so we, most of our playrooms are like down in the basement. So we'll send the kids down there and we'll be like, don't come up unless someone is crying or bleeding or, you know, (laughs) and so I do have some friends that like they have boys and they'll be playing kind of rough and they'll look at me and they'll be like, I don't care if you don't care. (laughs) Um, So like we do have that kind of relationship where, you know, we know that we'll intervene if it gets serious enough, but we're also kind of like, we tell them, we're like, don't come whining to us. If you guys have a problem, work it out. Like mm. y'all have got to figure it out on your own. But that's not, I know that's that's not all the, always the case. And I think we have that type of relationship now where we're close enough to, that we're comfortable with the way we parent uh, to be able to do that. But I do feel like, this is another thing that I wonder too. I haven't figured this out yet. Are the schools involving the parents too much too sometimes? Much. Like sometimes I get reports from, <laughs> Like from school and I'm just like, did I like, I don't really care. Like, but, <laughs> but they have some legal obligation to like notify me that, mm. you know, someone bit me, bit my kid or that. And I'm just kind of like, <laughs> was he bleeding? Like, She's oh, got he's boys. not, he's They're not tough. bleeding. It didn't, it didn't even break the skin. He doesn't even have a mark. Like, don't bother me. Like, I'm just kind of <laughs> like, you know, unless it's serious and I need to take him to the hospital. Got it. But like, you don't, but that's what I don't know if schools are under, like mm-hmm. more legal obligations these days to notify parents of mm. things. I agree with her. Are we making small, you know, mountains out of mohills? I will say the other thing I wonder too is when you're considering, do I need to get involved or not? What is the motive of my heart? Yep, is it genuine, mm-hmm. genuine concern or am I stirring it up because I'm just mad that that child oh, is yeah. doing that? Mm-hmm. And I feel like some moms are making it a deal because they just don't like it versus anyone's really... Mm. Yeah. You know, especially yeah. with boys playing in the basement. Okay. Somebody's going to get hurt. You yeah. just know it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not personal. <laughs> no, I totally agree. And I think that is kind of the foundation of so many things that we talk about on this podcast is, you know, in your heart, what the right thing to do is, and you need to go in that direction. I felt 
like this mom was desperate. I felt mm. I, I was sad for her and she was frustrated. And I think her kid is a good kid. And so uh, stepping in felt okay. But yeah. if it was, well, I want to be the hero or I want mm. to be in the mix of things that are going on, you know, that's where you have to do a gut check and go, well, okay, maybe my heart's not in the right place. So you probably know the right thing to do and whether or not to get involved. All right. We want to hear what you have to say. Chime in on Instagram. We are imom.com with the D-O-T spelled out. Right, Chloe? Right. Imom.com. I right. love it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the iMom podcast. iMom is the motherhood program of the nonprofit organization Family First. Along with our fatherhood program, All Pro Dad, we exist to help you love your family well. Subscribe to our daily email, the iMom Minute, by going to imom.com slash subscribe and get tons of great ideas, insight, and inspiration. The iMom Podcast is hosted by me, Abby Watts, along with Susan Merrill, Megan Tigner, and Chloe Blumenthal.